focusing on that. By the way, if anybody has any questions. So I just figured I would test it. Why not just test it and figure out? Um, I had uh, you know a few servers, and uh, so I had a lot of storage. So I, I was wondering, like, how many targets can I really do? Maybe I could do 1,000. 1,000 would be interesting. Um, I also wanted to test what, what happens when you have a massive number of targets and the error handling system kicks in, because that seems to happen naturally sometimes when the system gets busy. You have lots of I.O. going on, things get slower and slower, and then pretty soon timeouts and retries, and you have out of order I.O., and so the, and if there are any bugs, the, they get found. Um, and also the startup and shutdown, as I mentioned, scanning sysfs and disconnecting from thousands of sessions in iSCSI terms, how are you gonna do that? So I use target CLI to create my targets, that's the kernel target subsystem, and uh, I kind of created a simplistic uh, script to do that. It didn't work out at first. I had a couple of servers, and one I put 2,000 targets on, and the other one I put 4,000 targets on. So I had 6,000 targets, I should be able to test massive numbers. Um, I wanted to test the initiator and the targets uh, to find where the bottlenecks are. I didn't really want to test I.O., although that does need to be tested, <laughs> but that wasn't the focus of this. I was trying to find the order n squared stuff. Um, I did find some, as I kind of alluded to a moment ago, I found some issues with kernel when uh, the I.O., not the I.O. itself, but the communication that happens when you attach the new targets. It became, the load became so high that the system got behind and things started getting retried. And I found some kernel oopses, especially in older kernels, so I moved to a newer kernel. It was a little better. But there are some bugs in that. So I created a script, just a simple shell script to create targets, you know, create target one, create target two, from I to 2000. Um, but the problem is that uh, it ran really, really slow. It ended up taking about 30 hours to create 2,000 targets. Um, and so I thought, well, that's really not usable. Um, and so I ended up uh, plotting the data. And sure enough, it's order n squared. <laughs> um, and so, uh, you know, it's kind of uh, my simplistic script was probably the problem, I figured, because I was calling target CLI like four times for each target. And each time you call target CLI, it has to build state and then throw it away and then build state and throw it away. So, so I decided to try the target CLI daemon. That's a daemon that runs in the background that we don't actually, in our distribution, we don't use because it's logistically a little harder. But um, if you're doing thousands of targets, it really helps to just have the state maintained. So I did that and much better response time. Now I could create 2,000 targets in, an, in a, I mean 4,000 targets in an hour. So it really matters when you're doing this, like um, how you approach it. Convenience of target CLI is great, but it builds a state every time you start it up. So as you can, uh, let me back up there. You can see that line isn't exactly straight the purple line, so there is a little bit of um, order n squared in there somewhere, but it's much better. I, I bet if I got to 10,000 targets, you'd see a little curve in it, but still, that's much better. So there's a date about like one tar 4,000 targets in one hour, but now I have to actually use them. <laughs> so uh, the first thing I did is going from my laptop, this laptop, which is running um, Leap, 15.3, which has a, the 5.3 kernel. It's not exactly new. Um, and this is where I started running into some issues in the kernel. Um, and at, be, at the beginning, I just did a simple loop. Log into all 2,000 targets at once. So you can tell I, I open iSCSI to do that. Log into all targets and let me know when you're done. That ran into some I.O. Issue, issues in the kernel. So in order to work around that, I would log out of one, uh, log into one target at a time. Okay, so that's probably not gonna be good because again, I'm building state each time I start up this node.
So, some things that surprised me, uh, in iSCSI, there's a sequence you have to go through to use a target. First, you have to do discovery. You have to say, tell me what targets you have. Then you get a list of targets. Then you can say, I want to list, uh, log into all of them or some of them. So, it surprised me that discovery of 4,000 targets only took like three quarters of a second. And I guess the reason is it's like, it's a long list, but there's not a lot of back and forth. It's not like you have to talk to it once for each target. Yeah, because you're essentially just doing uh, very, uh, very few IOs to get the entire list. So it's really the size of the list which is transferred, but this is just normal IO. Yeah, yeah, so that was very pleasing. So uh, I, got a, I went to Tumbleweed, which is our rolling release that has a, a newer kernel. This had a 5.17 kernel. And um, I know recently uh, uh, Mike Christie has been working on a bunch of fixes in this area of the kernel 2 that aren't in this version. So I thought about patching it, but instead I wanted a, a non-moving target for my tests. But I think a next step would be after I identified some areas to try some of the patches that we've been working on. And the timing on this is order n squared. <laughs> So yeah, again, it's probably due to the, I'm guessing it's due to the fact that my uh, open iSCSI command is scanning sysfs twice for each target, and uh, sysfs is getting bigger and bigger and bigger as you log into more targets. So there's your order n squared. But again, it, it took a long time. And uh, as, as I kind of just said, I'm pretty sure the, this graph, the problem is the initiator, not the target, because the target's already pretty much order in at this point. What's that? Is this, again, the iSCSI knob thing? That um, the transport uh, fail fast means that um, some, uh, some transport error happened. And um, that typically only happens if you get a run into a knob timeout. Right. Because that's what triggered the transport failure. And by the I way, I, I had initiator no ops off too, uh, so, but the target might have had them. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, and fail, uh, fail fast, it retries indefinitely too, so that kind of keeps the kernel pretty busy. But uh, have you have you figured out why you get a fail fast? No, I mean, okay. no, I didn't get to track this down. I only no. discovered this like a couple of days ago. It'd be interesting but to I will. see what was going on in your target when your initiator was running the slow, whether the timeouts or something like this, or because the target has so much uh, data structure or state on it that it's taking longer to respond when you do all this logging. And the last thing, the last thing I tried to measure was logging out of targets, but I did not get a, a very good uh, data on this. <laughs> um, it was just logistically hard to do, um, and I did not want to like go through the list one at a time like I'd done earlier. So, so is this order n squared or order n? I don't know. I have to do more data here. And so, really, I've kind of have more questions than answers here. I'm sorry about that. But there's still a lot to do. I want to, this is, I'm only scratching the surface. Um, I need to test the, the data you just saw there, the logouts. I need to try to figure out the order in problems in the uh, initiator. And I need to track down the kernel issues. That's perhaps the most important. And this makes me think, this is kind of off subject, but why don't we have better tests for this? <laughs> we have iSCSI tests, by the way, but they're just not very good. Oh yeah, and then what about multipath? How do I test this with multipath? Because a lot of our customers, especially if they have thousands of disks, they use multipath. So uh, just to figure, uh, just uh, for clarification, so you really created 4,000 targets. Um, how, ma how many loons do, uh, does, uh, did each target have? I'm sorry, what? How, how many loons do, did each target have? How many what? Loons, meaning uh, uh, devices. I'm sorry, I can't understand you. Right. <laughs> so you create targets, which is fine, but the target needs to provide disks, meaning loons. What's that? Right. 
So how, how many devi disk devices did each target have? How many devices? Yeah, disk devices. You oh. have to export some data. Yes, you? well, they all had one. Just one, so you yes. have one to one, right? Yeah, okay. each one had a one gigabyte file back end. Oh, just a single one then. All right, yeah. good. That was the question. Yeah, but they were sparse, so they really didn't. No, no, that's not the point. Yeah. The point is that you, and um, what really matters is, um, it's not so much the number of targets, but really the number of disks. Because when you log in, you log, first log into the target, and then you do this guzzy inquiry thing and right. to try to figure out how many de devices are really there. Right. So, um, that, and that only, once you did that, then you have the disk d device, and only then the login is complete. So it really depends on how many disks you have, how long the, uh, the actual login will take. Right. Well, and the system is scanning for the partition table to figure that out each time it opens a disk, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah. That was one thing that surprised me, too. I passed by kind of quickly is how much I.O. occurs when you get a new disk. It's fine for a single disk, but when you get 1,000 new disks, it's overwhelming. You know, because it has to, like, read the partition table, has to turn, enable caching, and has to check to see if certain SCSI commands are supported. Um, one thing that kind of surprised me, too, is that about a year ago, I hooked up some code in uh, OpenEye SCSI that Mike Christie originally created but didn't use for no wait. So it allows you to log into a target but not wait for the response. And I thought that would be faster, and it wasn't. So I want to find out why. Any other questions? Thank you. So the, oh. the, uh, I'm just curious. If you can go back to when you were trying to do the uh, login data there and were surprised by that? Yeah, so, okay, this, so it ended up taking much longer than you thought. What, what's the actual scale of, I mean, was this eventually successful? And I can't quite It's tell seconds, so what, about 3,600 seconds is an hour? Okay, that's. Yeah, so this is about an hour. Like that does seem surprising to take. I do know we looked at this at one point, so I'm, yeah, I'm wondering if there's some sort of regression in here. Um, I know in the past, uh, the, the SysFS scanning from user space was uh, an absolute disaster. Um, and we had some, a, a, there were some old attempts at caching attributes to not need to do the read syscalls in the code um, that just, generated an enormous list that was scanned repeatedly um, without ever any effective cache hits. Uh, but it looks like we pulled that out a few years ago, and that was the last time I remember explicitly looking at logging into thousands of targets. So, um, yeah, I just kind of wanted to, to check with that. Cause yeah. And Mike, oops, excuse me. Mike uh, Christie suggested a couple areas to look to in the SysFS code to, to try to figure out why it's order n squared. But the time is coming when we're going to have this many targets. And can you imagine, like, um, a thousand targets? Is that going to, how long is it going to take the system to boot?